Hello. Welcome to my No Frills, Plain Vanilla, No Special Effects channel. I am Greg. Today I am going to do the A to Z tag. I have not actually been tagged because I am so new, probably no one even knows my channel is out here. So I hope by doing this, some people take some notice and like what they see. So in this tag, I am going to be going through the alphabet and going through a prompt based on each letter. So A, author you've read the most books from. That's an interesting question and sort of difficult to quantify. If I count books that I started reading in high school and up through 1990, that list would probably be Michael Moorcock or Stephen King. However, I really don't read those authors anymore. They sort of both have fallen by the wayside. Now, in 1990, I started writing down every book I have read. And based on that count, the book that I have read the most is William T. Woolman. He is a novelist and a journalist, and he's written about 30 books. I haven't read them all, but I am getting pretty close. B, best sequel ever. I'm going to sort of fudge it a little here. I am going to go with The Means of Ascent by Robert A. Caro. That's actually a biography of Lyndon B. Johnson, and that is the second volume of a currently four-volume set. There is supposed to be a fifth volume coming out someday. I don't know when that will be. Currently reading. I am reading Tornado God by Peter Thulson. This is I'm reading for maybe Midrash, and it is about religion and violent weather. On audiobook, I am listening to Horizontal Vertigo, A City Called Mexico by Juan Valero. And this is a nonfiction book. It is sort of a travelogue pastiche of life in Mexico. The author describes Mexico as a place of a million people and a million stories and a different million venues. So it's not really a, a coherent narrative. It's just lots of little stories about what you would find in Mexico. Also, when I listen to audiobooks, when I stop listening to an audiobook, I tend to listen to a group of short stories. And I am currently listening to an audiobook that I also have as a paper book. And this is my audio book that I listen to, uh, my audible book, my audio book that I listen to between other audio books. And that is the Black Lizard Big Book of Pulps, and it is a monster. I'm about one third of the way through. So, D, drink of choice while reading. Sweet tea. E, reader or physical book. I like both of them, so pretty much equal. F, fictional character you would have actually dated in high school. That's... You know, I'm going to have to cut out the high school part of that one and just say a fictional character I would have liked to go out with. And that would have been Rhoda from William Gaddis's JR. She is a hippie chick and she liked to date older men. So, yeah, I would have run off to Europe with her and lived a bohemian life. So, gee, glad you gave this book a chance. That would be The Other Bolin Girl by Philippa Gregory. About six, seven, eight years ago, I was in a book group and the, the, the book group moderator had chosen this book. And I just thought it was going to be dreadful. I thought it was going to be a romance book. And I almost thought of ditching the group for that month, but I read it. And I actually really liked this book. It's, it's, a, it's a historical novel uh, about King Henry VIII and um, the Bolins. And it was kind of odd. There, there was one other man in, the, in, in, in that book group, and he had the same reaction I do. He, he thought it was going to be a romance novel, but it's not. So it's a very good book. So H, hidden gem of a book. Not 100% sure what this is supposed to be, but I, I'm guessing it's a book that not many people know about. And I'm going to pick A Void by Georges Parekh. Now, this is a, lipograph, a, a novel as a lipogram. And a lipogram means you don't use a letter in the alphabet. And the letter not used in this book is the letter E. Now, it was originally written in French, 
and translated into English by Gilbert Alder. Now, E is the most common letter in both French and English, and is a very hard thing to do. This book doesn't really have much of a plot, doesn't have a lot of characters, but it has a lot of virtuoso language. Now, one of the things in this book is that there is a translated poem in the middle of the book. In the original French, it was a poem by Victor Hugo. The translator decided to pick uh, a more common English poem. And what he did is he, he rewrote uh, Poe's Raven as Blackbird, and he did not use the letter E. And I'm just gonna leave, read you the first stanza because I just love this thing. Blackbird. Twas upon a midnight tristful, I sat pouring wan and wistful through many a quaint and curious list full of my consort slain. I sat nodding, almost napping, till I caught a sound of tapping as of spirits softly rapping, rapping at my door in vain. Tis a visitor, I murmured, tapping at my door in vain, tapping soft as falling rain. And it continues on through the rest of Poe's Raven. Now, he did do a sort of little cheat by doing the, the old style murmured without the E and the apostrophe, but still a book I think anyone who loves language should pick up. I, important moment in your reading life. That's when I discovered audiobooks in May of 1997. I was given a copy of um, 1984 by George Orwell, narrated by um, Timothy West. It essentially, it was, it was intended to be exchanged at a bookstore for credit, but they didn't take it. So I read it or listened to it, and I have been hooked on audiobooks ever since then. J, just finished. I finished Vernon Subertex by Virginie Dupont. This is a novel translated from the French. It is the first of a trilogy. It is essentially the story of a record store owner who goes out of business and becomes homeless. And this is a book filled, of course, with homelessness, drug addicts, prostitutes, porn stars, transvestites, transsexuals, and all that kind of stuff in there. And it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting book. And I do plan to go and continue on to the rest of the trilogy. Okay, kinds of books you won't read. I'm really not gonna read young adult or romance. I'm just way too old to bother with the stories of teenagers. And romance, you know, you got Jane Austen and then everything else is just copying Jane Austen for romance. So no on romance and young adults. Longest or L, longest book you've ever read. That's an interesting question. Technically, the longest book, page count wise, I have read is The Mystery Dot Doc by Matthew McIntosh, clocking it at 1,660 pages. That's a cheat. Uh, the Mystery Dot Doc is an experimental novel, and a great number of those pages are not filled with words. You will get a sentence or two, maybe a word or two. Some of the pages actually have pictures and photographs, so you can read a hundred pages of that book, in some cases, in under an hour, and be, be reading everything. Then afterwards, technically the longest book I've ever read is The Power Broker by Robert A. Caro. Um, that's at 66 hours as audiobook, which... When you look on Amazon, it says it's like 1,000 or 276 pages or something like that. That's probably the longest book I've ever read. But the actual longest book I've ever read in page count wise would be The Dying Grass by William Goldman. And the official page count on this is 1,300 and 51 pages. That includes about 150 pages of um, footnotes. Yes, it's a novel. Yes, it's had footnotes. 
That's just the way William T. Roman writes. You'll just have to live with it. It is the story of the Nez Perce Indians who had a reservation uh, in the Midwest and they signed a treaty and then gold was discovered on the reservation and they were made to go on a 1,200 mile march to Oregon. March did not go well. It started a war between the Nez Perce Indians and the American government at the time. Um, Volman's definitely on the side of the Indians for the most part, but his characters are neither good nor bad. They, 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 they all contain qualities of both. They're very all gray characters, and that makes the novel very, very interesting, but it's kind of hard to latch on and really root for one side because both sides do good and both sides do bad. Major book, or uh, no, actually, we're now on M. Major book hangover because, well, this book <laughs> it, it is just a wild ride. It is also a contender for the longest book I've ever read. And if you do font size, maybe it is. But this book contains a poem, a play, and an invented language. And its chapters are very, very long and very intense, and intense. But it wiped me out after I finished reading that. N, number of bookcases you own. I own nine full, full Billy bookcases from Ikea. All those cases have an extender shelf on top. I own one narrow Billy bookcase with an extender. I own one short Billy and one short narrow billy and one extra short or one extra narrow short billy that's a lot of bookcases one book that you have read multiple times well there's plenty of books i've read multiple times the most recent book that i have reread is the sound and the fury by william faulkner i have read this book three times i read it first in a college class back in the 80s then I believe in the, the 90s, I listened to the audiobook version. And just recently, I read this copy and listened to the audiobook at the same time. Every time I reread read this book, I enjoy it more. Yes, it is a very complicated book to read, but I think it's well worth your effort. All right, number P, preferred place to read. Anywhere, I have my favorite couch, my den. I have a couch in the family room. I have a chaise lounge out back on my deck. And those are all great places to read. Q, quote, that inspires you or gives you feels from a book. I don't know about feels from a book. I, I kind of struggle thinking of a quote. So what I did is I just picked a favorite quote from an author. Every revolution evaporates and leaves behind only the slime of a new bureaucracy. Franz Kafka. R, reading regret. I regret being sucked into the Harry Potter series. I had to read the first three books for a book group and this was when only the three books were out. And we read it. And I thought, yeah, you know, they're okay. And a year later, the book group was said, hey, let's read the fourth book. And so I said, oh, all right. I read the fourth book. And go, you know, this is... Meh. And then after that, the book group broke up. And I eventually saw the fifth book in Costco. And I said, well, I'll try it. And by that time, I couldn't even finish it. It's, it's a children's book. I'm sorry. It's for children. I was an adult. Didn't like it. Series you started and need to finish. All books are out in the series. I need to finish Raymond Chandler, Philip Marlowe. I happened to start reading them again earlier this year. I had read The Big Sleep a few times before. So I'm just back and started and, and I do want to continue and read this whole series. T, three, three of your all-time favorite books. 
I'll get heat for this one. Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. Beautifully written book. It's the author's third language and he writes better than almost anyone else in English. Albert Camus, The Stranger. I had to read this book for uh, an intense criticism class for college. It was everyone in the class got to pick their own book and you had to write five papers on this book. So I got really in, in intense with this book back in college. And ever since then, I have reread it probably five or six times. I originally read the Gilbert Stewart translation and now I have the Matthew Ward translation. I have also listened to the audiobook and I have the graphic novel. Balgren by Samuel R. Delaney. This is a science fiction novel, but it is not really a science fiction novel because it is a novel intended for, for literature people. Like Finnegan's Wake, it starts with the last half of a sentence and ends with the first half of a sentence. And within this book, if you want to take a look, if I can find a good sample, there are, there you go. You will notice the, the pages. There are, are multiple types of uh, paragraph columns. And that's because one of the characters in the books has found a notebook that has been completely written in. And the only place for him to write is in the margins of the notebook. And there's a part in here where you're reading that notebook. So you get the main text of the book. And then in these sub paragraphs, there, there's the text that he's writing in the margins. I don't think it, it works really well. It's sort of funky on the page. And if you try looking at the ebook, it's even stranger. And then the audiobook is just incomprehensible because there's, there's no clue in the audiobook that you're actually reading two different narratives. It sounds like for a moment, that the uh, the text is just skipped ahead. So don't read the audiobook and don't look at the ebook. Do read the paperback version of this book. You, unapologetic fangirl for. Well, I'm not a fangirl and I'm not really a fanboy for anything. I think my fandom days have passed me by, so I'm a fan of nothing. V, very excited for this release more than all others. I am waiting for the fifth release, the fifth book in the LBJ biography by Robert A. Carroll. It does not have a publication date yet, so I'm just going to sit back and wait for it. W, worst bookish habit. On my Kindle, I tend to buy lots of cheap ebooks that go on sale. I have a wish list on Amazon and um, every few days I check that and I check to see if the book has gone on sale. So I'll see that a book that's normally $12.99 is on sale one day for $1.99. I buy it. And I buy lots of those kind of books every month, more than I could ever possibly read. It's like book hoarding and I really should stop that. I, I, I spend much more. I. I'd probably be better off just buying the book at full price when I want to read it than trying to hoard up books and save them for another day. X. X marks the spot. Start at the top left of your shelf and pick the 27th book. Martin Amos, London Fields. This, also notice, has my original receipt. I bought this book on 4-17-1988. W. The last book you purchased. No, that's why, I'm sorry. Why is the last book purchased? The last book I purchased was the Western, my Library of America edition. I actually purchased this for just one book, Warlock by Oakley Hall. Although I, I actually might want to read all the other ones. I know I want to read the Oxbow, interest in, Oxbow in, Incident someday. And Shane and the Searchers, yeah, I'll get to them someday. And Z, the Z Stretcher book, the last book that keeps you up way too late. 
That would have been The Naked God by Peter F. Hamilton. That was an audiobook. It's a science fiction novel. It's the third in a trilogy. All those books are about 40 hours long. One night I was getting towards the end and I noticed that I had like an hour and a half left and it was like 10 o'clock at night and my wife had gone to sleep. So I just uh, sat on the back deck and listened to the last half of that book for an hour and a half. It was pretty good. And that is my A to Z tag. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you watched it and got to my rambling, I do thank you. I also have to make some tags. So I am going to tag Miss Reads A Lot. I have just discovered her channel. She has about as many videos up as I do, so she's just about as new as I do. And if she doesn't want to do this, that's fine. It's all fun and games, and please feel free to ignore it. I am also going to tag uh, Michael K. Vaughn because I always enjoy watching his videos and I think he'll do an interesting job on this. So thank you and goodbye.